Well, usually these labs, sort of things like the Media Lab, their main value is a point of view and a way of looking at the future, a way of inventing the future, a way of doing things that are somewhat contrarian. Uh, if common sense suggests you should do X, well, one of the things about common sense is it's common. And maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should try something else. So it's a low risk environment. Nobody gets hurt, you don't, you try things, you, you, nobody has to deal with shareholders. I can have 30 experiments, 29 of which fail. And the reason that makes sense, or is justifiable, is that the students involved with that are getting an education. And you sometimes learn more from your failures. If I was running a company and told my shareholders I'm gonna do 30 projects and 29 of them are going to fail, I would be kicked out immediately. But a place like the Media Lab and other sort of labs like it allow for this risk that is outside the normal marketplace. The government in the various flavors from local to, to more global, can learn to listen to the voices from beneath, that not everything is stacked up through some kind of represent, representative system. And we get a lot of young people who come up with extraordinary ideas that have such enormous value and then whether that particular person you know goes on but just societal values that in the United States we sometimes forget the level of respect we have for young people which isn't true in most countries in the world so that puts us in a pretty unique position and the other thing that government maybe should at least attend to a bit more, is that it's not that the world is multidisciplinary. The world is becoming antidisciplinary. The fact that you, you don't study something and become an expert in it, and then somebody else studies something, becomes an expert, and you put that it's a much more porous, uh, much more interlocked, sort of borderless, intellectual body that you can traverse now in many, many ways. And the one thing you have to learn is that there are multiple points of view for any single path you take through it. There's never just one. Children can explore and invent and, and learn a great deal on their own, that learning by being told is only one form of learning. And for most of us, in fact, for all of us, the first five, six years of life, we did no learning in that way. We did learning by experimenting, by play. It was called playing. We experimented. And then sort of at about age six, it's kind of a, we stop and we're now going to march through the next 10, 12 years, if we're lucky, um, going through a system that is primarily one that tells you things, whether it's through a book or through a teacher standing there or for somebody like I'm doing right now on a, on a screen. And much less is done through trial and error and experimentation and, 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 and playing with things. And I think that that, with one laptop per child, we said, well, that boundary is going to change. And that, that there's a lot more of learning by doing, learning by making, learning by writing programs, learning by debugging those programs, and effectively learning, learning. That's the key. Well, the test-heavy, competitive, 
view of education is, I don't have another way, it's pathetic. It is so damaging and it's so wrong-minded. But I can't tell you that I, that's what drove me to do one laptop per child. Uh, I think it's more recently, in the past four or five years, that it has become noticeable beyond, you know, you can't ignore it anymore. The fact that there are people who believe that education is a competitive process that we measure through tests is so damaging. It is, it's, it's, it's a design process. It's, an, it's a collaborative process. It's, and, and the evidence is right there. You look at Finland, off the charts on all the scales through 12th grade. No tests, no homework, shortest days per year, shortest hours per day. You say, well, wait a minute, how did that happen? And they're off the charts. And the answer is, there's no competition. And so all you do is you take the competitive piece out and you replace it with a collaborative constructionist view of education and you go off the charts. I can't think of anything more important to do for the rest of my life. Um, I've changed a little bit to focus on maybe the telecommunications piece instead of the laptop piece, but it's, it's really connectivity as a human right. And my interest is not the next billion people, but the last billion people. And these are the people who don't have electricity, they don't have schools, they don't, they really are outside of society as we know it. Most of them are primitive. All of them are by any measure poor. Uh, and if you can solve or at least participate in solving that piece of education and learning, I believe it'll have a lot of lessons for the rest of the, the world of learning.